One of the deadliest statement I had this week was how much of an asset unemployment is. This idea, I cannot claim full credit. Uh, I had borrowed this idea from a conversation we had with one of our, uh, actually the former youth fund CEO, God Semelango, and he explained to me detail, in, uh, in details how um, this country can make money from nyinyi kukosa job. So, sengine labda mmekosa job jujava itaki pesa mingi. So, to, to, help us, to help us navigate this conversation, we, uh, I reached out to Dr. Juma Mukwana, who is the Director General of Kenya National Qualifications Authority. Now, I reached out to him because I know how passionate he is about Manenoya Kutafta Job na Labor Export. They have a different program. Uh, that's not the subject of our show today. But give it up for Dr. Juma Mukwana. <laughs> Asante wase asante asante na nimefurahi kuwa hapa. Ah karibu sana. Asante. Uh when I told you that unemployment is an asset before I explained what uh Mzee Gor Semelango explained kwanza ulishtuka. And then we got to structured labor export. And uh we broke it down. In your own words from what we talked about what's your understanding of structured labor export? for the sake of our view. Watch uh, to Rudy Yuma Kidogo. Yes. Because uh, uh, the, if we look at development the way we have had yes. before our independence, uh, if you look at uh, the pre-colonial or even colonial days, wakati sis to kona bebu wakama slaves to kipereko America, to kipereko kufanya kasi. Yes. Inaonyesha ya kwamba, when you look at countries, there's no country that has all the labor that it requires. Yes. So at any one time when development is taking place, industrialization is taking place, utapata inji iko na wali muengi, but inaitaji technicians ye haina. And so if you look at us as Africa, for example, tulianza kubebo na warabu na wazungu, tukipereko ngambo, kwa sababu walikuwa na nafasi, za kazi, za ku-industrialize inji zao, yes. na wakuwa na watu. So tulikuwa tunabebo, tunapereko, lakini wakati ule, we are not being paid. Uh, if we look at it today, uh, the gap is even bigger. So you find uh, Hapa Kenya, we have many young people, wame Malisa College, wame Malisa University, they have no jobs. But uh, ukienda inji zingine, uh, the, the, the development that they have, ni kwamba wanaitaji watu. Wanaitaji watu. If you look at uh, even Canada today, Australia, if you look at the Middle East, Jordan, United Arab Emirates, inji yao vile hiko mafuta na vile wanaendelea, ni kwamba wananafasi nyingi ya vijana na uh, wazee kuenda ku, kutuanga job huko lakini sasa so, so that's where the opportunities yeah. we have a few people when you wanna struggle kivi yao ya wameenda yes. uh, as we talk today we nearly have uh, according to statistics uh, 500,000 half a million people of Kenyans live outside the country already but hawa ni wazee wale walikitafutia Yes. So, so, and nobody says, and I think this is where we get it wrong, that kwa sababu mimi nisaliwa Kenya, nitawawa Kenya, lazima nifanya kazi Kenya. You see, hii dunia, vile mungu wa liumba, ni yetu sisi wote. Really, we all belong to everywhere. But we have this idea, nisaliwa hapa, nasoma hapa, naoa hapa, rusi yangu ni hapa, alavu, nasiku hapa, unaona? Si, tuko na migu. Na, migu, na hata napenda hiyo point yako ya kuoa sana because having watched soaps yes. I think I can migrate migrate to the Philippines but and <laughs> 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 yes ukiangalia sasa kama Philippines is mm. inji za Southeast Asia the Philippines today has 10 million Filipinos working outside the country bringing in 2 trillion Kenya shillings in a year that's a half of our budget brought in by 10 million Filipinos that work outside the country. Yes. So you can imagine 10 million people, that is like 20% uh, of Kenya's population, we are about 50 yes. million, yes, 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 uh, bringing yes. in half of our budget uh, in, in, in foreign currency. It, that's the other most important part because na sisi hapa unajua vile tuliwajiwa inji na wazungu, foreign uh, uh, currency tunatafuta kwa nini? Kwa kahawa, kwa machani, sindio? You yes. export tea. So we spend a lot of time uh, trying to, to to produce coffee and produce tea, but uh, how much does it bring? The mesema wazewa me tunawa Kenya mbawa menda nje kiviao. Today they are bringing to Kenya 32 billion a month. Uh, Ika hawa na machani five 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 hundred thousand Kenyans. Yes, five hundred 
500,000 Kenyans yes. bring in 32 billion. billion every month. 32 billion every yes. month. Yes, and uh, if you multiply that, that is like 400, almost 400 billion a year, yes. something like that. Yes. Uh, machani na, na kahawa ambayo tunangangana sana. Tumejenga factory, tumeandika extension officer, tuna coffee act, tuna nini. I, I, ndugu yangu kwa mwaka, ikileta 40 billion. Umejaribu sana. So you can see that uh, ukiangalia vile tunakaa, uh, priorities zetu, kasi kama hii naleta 32 billion in a month, na ingine naleta 40 billion in a year, so kwa mwaka ni, kwa mwezi ni 3, 3 billion, sindio? Yes, Kahawa, yes. ama machani. Na hiyo ndiyo tunaseme naleta uh, foreign exchange ana, sindio? So you can see that... that uh, exporting people. Exporting people uh, in a structured way, in a, res <laughs> in a respectable and dignified way, Hatutaki, uh, and that's why I think what we'll be discussing, will bring us more money. Okay. It will bring opportunities to the country, yeah. but it will also bring opportunities to the young people. Of course, it has to so be So it's a win-win situation. It has to be respectable and structured because yeah. Nikoshua Midguna to Mangi do home. <laughs> <laughs> people have to go nicely. <laughs> people have to go nicely. Nicely, yes. <clears throat> mm. And you know the question I asked God Semelango yes. was very simple. Yeah. That gave birth to this whole conversation. Mimuliza, a question that we asked the current youth fund CEO. Because there, there was talk that youth fund is underfunded, yes. right? Yeah. So I asked the question of what if the youth fund was uh, structured like the NYS, whereby it's accessible nationally, they get more funds, and then it works like NYS. Yeah. So, but that then in this case, it becomes a platform to train people on entrepreneurship, and then you fund them yes. once they know how to use money once they get the required uh, knowledge on how money works, right? And then he said that this country has good ideas. I can break it down. I can uh, if this country exported one million people yes. when you want to find a job uh, to different country, countries, Kenya has uh, a relationship with many countries. Yes. So in this one million, and then let's say the government negotiates for, let's give it a rough figure. 100,000 yeah. earning capacity for each person, right? Yeah. Wachana na easy kuenda through the funny funny agencies because there are countries that can pay that. Yes. 100,000. You negotiate for them terms uko. Alafu, the government says, we'll take 10,000 from each of you. Irudi kwa housing, yenu nyumbani. Uh, and he did the math, ikakuwa, ikafika up to 120 billion from a million Kenyans every year. When they come back home, wanapata manyumba. And he also explains uh, what you mentioned, uh, uh, that a country like Philippines also exports people. Like, what are we doing with so many unemployed people basi around if such ideas can work? Yes, uh, it, it, it depends because, you see, uh, let's go, let's step back a little bit to youth fund. Yes. Uh, of course, the assumption to Nakua Nayo, there are facts and figures. Uh, we have many people who have been taught entrepreneurship. Uh, one of the things that we ignore, I'm not uh, negating anything, ya kwamba sisi wote hatukusaliwa kuwa wafanya biyashara. So, you will find, if you are very lucky, one, maximum two out of ten, will succeed in business. Uh, so you see, uh, biyashara ni baali mzuri, and that's why sometimes tunapeana vijana pesa, uh, uh, within uh, six months, the, in fact, uh, if you look at internationally, what we say is that 75% of all businesses started die within one year. It's okay, but if even at a success sasa, rate of two, even at a success rate of two out of ten, yes, if two people learn business properly, yes. they can be employed. To, uh, they can be able to employ four people each. Correct, and that is why I'm saying to invest kwa vijana kufanya biashara, but pia kama tunaisa pata hizo jobs, so we supplement. You see what I mean? Yes. Because not all of us can be business people, so to invest kwa awa wili wenye watafaulu, of course, tajaribu wengi, alafu wengine watafaulu, wengine, alafu wengine, wenye wesi fanya biyashara, tu watafutie njia ya kuenda nje. So, so okay. that, 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 that balance is it out. Very okay. well. Yeah. Okay. Ah, sawa, sawa. Now, what is so difficult in terms of policy uh, that such ideas cannot be implemented? Uh, what has happened is that, uh, for example, I, I remember when I was talking to you, I told you, that uh, if you go to Dubai today, yes. we mwenye utafute tu doza hako, uende ukapo, ukitafuta jobu, na uko na makaratasi, yes. the longest time you'll tamak 
is two months. The longest time. The longest time. And if you look at the world, wait, like uh, last year, I think I was involved in this process where to our nurses, 5,000, uh, the Kenya government, the British government, Yakwamba, 5,000 nurses, and they will, they will go every year until they reach 30,000, uh, can go and work in the UK. But you yes. see, uh, we are not proactive. Sasa, how and you tunataka nurses. But tungekua uh, proactive, sisi wenyeo tukeangalia Australia, nataka nini? Tuko na team. Wanataka nini? Accountants, wanataka doctors, wanataka uh, plumbers, uh, Jordan. Because part of what you need, when we structure this thing well, is that we have to have a team that says, uh, what is that this country, uh, come on, Jordan, wanataka nani? And then we come back and uh, locally to Meangaria Pier, wa watu wenye wanakazi, wa mesoma, na wanatafuta kazi, ni area gani, tunayaza export. Sindio? Yes. And then when you want to export also labor, eh, unajua kama umetrainia mutu market ya Kenya. Yes. Uyo mutu uwezi ku export ya RIC. Yes. That is why, ukiona wengi ambao wanatoka Kenya wanaenda ngambo, ni domestic workers. And yet, if you go to India and the Philippines, they also export a lot of people to the Middle East. They export plumbers, electricians, uh, mechanics, uh, truck drivers. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the thing I'm trying to say is that once you focus on exporting your labor, then you go to the source of the labor. Now, Lise, where on a plumber in Agani? The plumber we are producing here may not be able to function in those markets. Which mechanic, what skills should they have? So remember there are two things also when you want to do uh, labor migration. There's the technical skills. And these technical skills, whether it's a plumber or a mechanic or a driver, must meet minimum international standard. Alafu, tuna the social part. Unajua sasa wewe kutoka hapa kuingiana inji ya marabu. Na wansa kufunction hapo. So you can be a first class degree, but to kuingia kwa hii environment, Remember, the environment is also important. You may not be able to function. So as a country, tunataka kujiuliza, um, tukitaka kupeleka mechanic uh, Dubai. Mm -hmm. Tunaitaji mechanic to train na munagani. So now, we stop training for ourselves and start training for that other, other country. Okay. So we, we don't just do our standard. We also get their standard. We even get them to come to help us to actually develop a program, a curriculum, a training program that will meet their needs. Then, yes. this should be done even hapo uh, kwa warabu siko shua kama you need more training other than kuleandevu. Of course, kama unajua. <laughs> <laughs> kama, kama unajua. And I don't know kama, <coughs> eh, kama I'm overthinking, but when you said we become proactive, I don't know kama akili yangu mechemka sana. Yes. I just saw an opportunity now that seme, the UK closed the Mera market. Yes. And they were making money for Meru people. Yeah. Uh, if kama wataki watu wao wa chane mira uko, we can export a million people wa... Wa kukula mira. <laughs> yeah, alafu na wapelekea mira wa na chane ya uko. I don't know, I don't know about that. But then, you are very vast, uh, your, your knowledge uh, in the education sector is vast. So, my question would be, uh, why can't we basi approach unemployment from that perspective? Like, when we have people training in TVET... Uh, institution, instead of training for the Kenyan market, we incorporate in the curriculum, select countries where people can work in. So this becomes something that is, uh, as in come at the times where people could be booked wakiwa wanasoma tayari, right? Yes. I understand that there was such a time. Yes. Like, oh, uh, we have uh, X number of people graduating, they will be absorbed in this company. You look for jobs for people while still they are learning. Yes, you see what uh, Wacha Turudi Chin, let me simplify it. We, pro, we grow tea and coffee. Yes. Remember, not all the coffee and tea that we, ex that we grow can be exported. To a class in a co-exported. So if you yes. go to Europe, there is a standard of coffee that can access that market. Yes. There is a standard. That is nyama, kitaka kuuza meat. If you want to export to the EU, for example, they have a standard. Yanyama. So not all the meat that you do in the correct corner or KMC will go to the European market. So they have a standard. So usually those who export, wanaenda wanaanza na hiyo. Wana so we actually save the best for the West. Kureta, kureta hii nyama, yes. inakuletea nyama inagani. So anakuambia the European standard 
for meat and there are several classes. So, ukitaka ku export labor pia tuna standard. So, huyu mtu mwenye ume train Kenya kwa Tibet, hawezi toka hapa leo na ende Belgium na function kama electrician because yes. the standard of wiring electrical Stima working Belgium. is completely different. <laughs> No, no. So, so, so we must uh, start. It is like uh, when you are producing, let me put it the other way down. When you are a business person and you want to produce a product to sell in the market, you do what we call a feasibility study. Unauliza e market in attack a product, how do I even package it for this market? So, okay. if you want to export labor, you start there. If I want to bring labor to Australia, yes. what kind of accountant, what, what is the accounting system? What, what is the standard of training accountants in Australia? Yes. So, tunachukua yu standard. Alafu, tunaruli hapa Kenya. Tunakaa na Kassadem. Tunaulizana, yi standard yenu ya Kenya. E, kama tunataka kupereka 50 accountants to Australia, e, this is the standard. So, today, what is happening? A Kenyan goes to Australia. He was trained on the Kenyan standard. Uh, akipewa kazi, what we are seeing now is some of them take three to five years. Reorientation, transformation, yes. reforming. Yes. Do you yes. catch Ushike? Laini Ayo system. So it, it's very wasteful. And, and so that's what is happening. So, so if you really want to, if you see the, 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 the irony is this we are producing for the Kenyan market. The Kenyan market is full. And we continue producing for the same for Kenyan, the Kenyan market, market. And yet there is a market that is looking for these people. And we are not bothered to understand what are they looking for. Ni kama ndugu meenda vita na nimekupea risasi na unapiga hii risasi ulikuwa nayo hamsini imeisha na ume miss target na bado unaendelea ku kupiga risasi kupiga risasi so unasimama ulive mwisho utatupa hata punduki so yes. so hapo ndio tuna yes that's where the gap is that's where the, so the gap is there so the need for these people is there but as a country let me know so what do we need to export labor we need three critical things one we need a national policy. The way we have a policy for coffee and a policy for tea and a policy for... So you need a national policy on structured labor export. How will it, which we don't have Which now. we don't have. How will it function? I know we have the National Employment Authority, which is an attempt to try and do that. So you need a policy. Two, you need a regulatory framework. Yakwamba, in this structured labor export, who are the players? To the Ministry of Education that is producing the people, to the Ministry of Labor, to the National Employment. What is their role in preparing these people for that export market? Uh, for example, to now wanachita agents. When you wanna chukua watu, wana weka feature kwa room, wana, they are preparing them, so they train them, they even take money from them. Yeah. Uh, even yeah. prepare for you passports and even visas for you to go. So that those kind of people how do we regulate them? What is their role? So we identify, so the regulatory environment. Alafu, huko, ukifika huko, the way Philippines has done it. Tuna watu wataenda, watachukua miezi mbili tatu, di wapate kasi. Unaishi wapi. So if you go to Philippines, in each country, they have even hired space. Ukifika huko, uh, as you are being orientated on how to tamak and even uh, link to the right place, tunabaalu utaishi, utakula, utaoga, you know what I mean. Uki pata employer na upate shida na eye, tunabaalu na eza retreat. Sio kutorokea airport, mbaka umenyanganywa. So, so, ata hii viti ya kunyanganywa passport. You see, the reason why tunanyanganywa passport, kwa nini? Kwa sababu sisi, hatuna policy. So, what happens, huyu agent wetu wa Kenya, hako na agent, wacha tuseme Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, tuna ule mtu anasema, anatembea, anasema, tunataka eh, 300 domestic workers. So, anambia hui wa Kenya. Hui wa Kenya anatafuta domestic workers au miatatu. But sasa, huyu akipata hawa atu miatatu, hawana passport, hawana air ticket, hawana insurance. Sindio? So, what's happening today is that uyule agent wa Saudi Arabia anakuja kwako. Anasema, hui taka made a letter person. So, the person who is looking for the employee now pays the agent. So, I pay you 100,000. Atarudisha na mulagani. Anasema, sasa, ukipata huyo maid, utatua kwa mshara ya? Kwa mshara ya. Sasa hiyo mia, ndiyo wanagawana, wanapea agent wa Kenya. 
agent wa Kenya anakutafuta wewe anakuambia sasa nitakusaidia kupata passport, kupata visa, kukutrain vile utafanya hii kazi, si ndio? So wewe ujatoka hapa mtu amekulipia. And that is where the, and now you see by huyo mtu kukulipia he has taken away your power to negotiate. Si nimeshalipa. Yes. So nipe mtu ama nini? Lakini tungekuwa na system where sisi wenyewe sasa hiyo fund tulisema wale watu wako huko nje tungechukua hata 1% tuweke kwa kiti. Tuseme this is the fund that we will use to fund people to go outside. So sisi kama Kenya tuna embassy in Saudi Arabia. Kwa nini hiyo embassy haiwezi kusema sasa sisi tuko na watu, tuna electricians lakini sisi kama Kenya government hii watu wanafanya nje wa, 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 they contribute some money we build a kit yule anataka kuenda tunamsaidia we can support them up to 100000 ya kwamba akifika huko yeye pia na contribute kwa hii kit so sahi the way we are doing it it is the it is the demand that is paying the supplier sisi tunapata so kama mimi nimelipia mtu na nimengoja kuje na wacha tuseme nilipa 100 ndio kuje sasa ukifika kwangu unataka kusema hii masingara sio mazuri siwezi fanya hapa kazi na mimi nilipa 100 si ndio yes. that's why wananyanganya passport wanasema lazima nirudishe mia yangu ndio ufanye yes. nini yes. <laughs> utoroke yes. so you can see that because we have not structured it well this system is not favoring us okay. so but if we developed our own way sisi tumekuprepare tumekutrain tumekupea passport tumekupea ndege ukifika huko una agreement ya kwamba 10% of what you get or 5% is donated to a kit yenye atasaidia wengine na wewe hata insurance ya medical na nini so so you see that's why you unapata we hear many people saying nilifika huko nikanyang'anywa passport we have never asked ourselves why because huyu mtu alitoa pesa ukuje si ndio so ukifika unasema ah kwa hii nyumba siwezi ka eh, mia yake yeye alitoa you yes, know yes, it's, yes, it's yes, almost yes. like modern slavery you know what i mean yes. so so as a country we can do better because we know where the problems are okay. and we have an embassy in that place so we should be having a place uh, so we should really be because we know the market is there we, uh, even negotiating so utapata that's why they will tell you ule anapitia kwa agent atapata 25000 lakini ukijipeleka wewe mwenyewe they earn 50000 if you talk to those people who have gone there why yes, yes. because wewe umejipeleka kwa ticket yako kwa passport yako hakuna mtu amekulipia lakini kama umesaidiwa na agent agent ameshakula pesa ya mu na yeye pia bila amekusaidia kuenda lazima atengeneze pesa kwako si ndio yes, yes. so so we have a lot of issues there and that is why even those who reach in Saudi Arabia will tell you nikienda bali nimepelekwa na agent nalipo 25000 lakini kitoroka na nitafute kasi mwenyewe Nita, immediately i get 51000 okay. because where you are going nobody has paid for you so so those are the gymnastics that we can actually deal with Okay so is it accurate to say that uh, if there are that many opportunities outside the country uh, people are unemployed because we do not have a policy and leaders who can follow through with such ideas in this case in this sense that um, I think it's also accurate to say that if some of our leaders would put politics aside they would stop promising jobs out of the thin air and promise to negotiate for opportunities because it's funny how uh, like i think in london juicy they were talking of a shortage of truck drivers a shortage yes and we have people here uh, i saw a story on ntv we have truck drivers who have vast experience yeah wanasema hawajakuwa na job since covid in fact, Should the, be as easy in as fact that's why i said the first issue we need is the policy the next issue we needed was a regulatory environment the third issue yenye sikusema ni negotiated labor agreements so so proactive so ukitaka hii system ifanye ukue na policy ukue na regulatory environment ya ku regulate kila mtu mwenye yako kwa hiyo system and then the third one you now have a, a system that is an intelligent system okay. that is saying today in Belgium this is what they're looking for and Kenya can supply this today in Australia in New Zealand so you have a system and we have embassies in these countries yes uh, so so that now you need a system that will say as the embassy ambassador of Kenya in uh, in Qatar I can go and talk to the government there and say can we supply this what will be the terms so so you see that proactivity also does not just say i have accountants it says we have 200 accountants we can give you but you also negotiate what is their salary 
What are the terms? Is it contractual? Uh, what happens to medical insurance? Yes. What happens to pension, for example? Uh, uh, and, and so on, and investment opportunities. And, and so we, you, you now put in some kind of a structure of how do we run this system? And how do we run it sustainably? Okay. Remember, to Nasrakali Nakuja and Gideon Nakuja, in Gideon Natoka. So, how do we make sure, for example, this system that we've put in place does not end with this government? Because these people will be working across uh, different areas. And remember, each country has a different culture, has a different needs. So, part of what they have done in the Philippines, for example, if you are going to the Middle East, there is a school for preparing people going to the Middle East. If you are going to Europe, there's a school that prepares you. This is a European culture of work. Uh, the work ethics, uh, how do you operate in Canada, for example. If you look at Canada, for example, there's lots of opportunities. And we have embassies in all these In countries. all these places, but we have not empowered them. And also because if you have not developed the system, uh, yes. how do I even do it as an ambassador in, in Canada? So, okay. so, so that's where we are. Okay. Yeah. Sawa, sawa. And Kenyans are not demanding. Ata ukisema ti Philippines wanakupea mahali pa kulala, kukula na kuoga. Kenyans, we don't need all that. Tuneza nitaji pa kukula na pa kulala, but kuoga from the men's conference. <laughs> from the men's conference, the standard time was? Ilikuwa? Twice a month. <laughs> Ama public holidays. As in it was, it's not at that much. Eh, si tunataka tu madaraka day na jamhuri, sindio? Eh, we don't even, atuta maniza majiao. So before we let you go, where can we start? So that a conversation like this one is ended to evil. Where can we start? I have seen now in this uh, election, uh, both uh, candidates, I see some element of, because unajua shida ya hii topic ya labor export, uh, in a kuanga mixed up, tunawatu, tunakiti naito brain drain. Tunawatu wanasema, oh, sasa tutajukua our best brain, sikitu pereke wapi. Tunapia, EU exploitation. And uh, you see, uh, we can't call it brain drain uh, when the people you have trained are sitting here, na wana kasi. True. So we have people. Uh, so, so, um, a love ya pili, uh, ile harassment tunawona tu watu wetu wanakuwa harassed ni because kila mtu anajipeleka kivi yake. And then, uh, the few people that are helping them in terms of our agents, you see, they are not in that for you. They are in need because of business. See, you know, for every person they take to the Middle East, they make money. So, so unajua kama mtu anatengenza pesa kikupeleka, ukiumia, kurudi kwake na kuwa, shida. See, you know? so, 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 we need, uh, so, so what we need is, uh, as I've said, a good policy that looks at, and then a regulatory framework that protects even the workers, and that also makes sure that the system can be sustained. Mutu wakiwa konjeka, mutu wakikufa, paadimbaya, uko nje, tunafanya na muna gani. So that the relatives are not raising money to bring somebody back, na alikuwa nafanya kasi. And then, uh, mshahara. Okay. Unaona? Sasa unaona hii mshahara, ukienda sasa Middle East, uh, interesting, Mukenya akienda kufanya hii domestic work, atalesa lipa 25,000. Muindi akienda huko, analipa 75,000. The Philippines, anapata ata 75,000. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu, these ones have a structured. It is a government to government. It is an agreement. Lakini sasa hapa wapani wewe na uyu jama. Yes. Unaona? Yes. And you, you see, because we are desperate, uh, uh, kile utapewa, lazima wanakubali. So, so, so really, uh, this is a conversation that any government can pick up. And uh, the reason why this is working very well is because Africa and Kenya, we have the youngest population. Our average age in Kenya is 18 years. The average age in Europe is 42 years. So I've lived in the U.S., for example, where I've seen Waze, at 81 years, is still taking up a contract to deliver mail, to, to, drive, to drive a truck. At 80, because wametafuta mutu hakuna. Na sisi tu, tu kwa hapa na mutu 17 years, analala na muka sasita. <laughs> Unaona? Anataka kuomba airtime kwa mama. Hmm. Mutu wako 35 years, sorry, ajahama kwao. Bado, anategea ugari. So you find a situation where but, we are. But at, where at we are now, kwa 35, please let me defend them. Eh. Uh, at 33, yesu bado alikuwa kwa nyumba. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we are those are followers of Jesus. Of Jesus you Christ. can't criticize someone kwa kukaa kwa nyumba ya mzazi. Kwa nyumba ya mzazi. Yes. Okay. But we get your point. We get your point. We get your point. Sir. Okay. Asante sana and uh wapi makofi ya Dr. Juma? Alafu sio sio maneno yangu Dr. Juma amesema sio lazima juu Kenya uoe Kenya. Wapi makofi ya Dr. Juma? Thank <laughs> you.